G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Uh, doing a little bit of an impromptu video today. Didn't expect to be making this one, um, but as I've got back from the coffee shop this morning, uh, I've looked online and it appears that Damien Hardwick has sensationally stepped down as the Richmond coach. Um, it's unclear whether that's effective immediately at the time I record this, um, but news has broken um, on Monday night in Australia that he's gonna call time on his 13-year uh, career, I think, at Richmond. Um, which is you know, a big shock to us all. Obviously, he's been the coach for a long time, but the nature of him stepping down suddenly in the middle of the season um, has definitely come as a bit of a surprise. So just to clarify, at the time I record this, uh, this hasn't officially been announced by Hardwick uh, as such. It's kind of a, a story that's leaked, and I was initially a little bit reluctant to do a video on it until we found out for confirmation, but so many different media outlets are reporting this that I'm starting to think this is pretty much certainly going to be true. So by tomorrow, we are likely to have an official announcement and we're gonna find out whether he's stepping down at the end of the season or effective immediately. Now, the reason for him stepping down uh, reportedly is largely burnout is the quote, which is unsurprising. This guy is actually the longest serving coach in the league, I believe, um, just ahead of John Longmire, just ahead of uh, Chris Scott as well. He's been there 13 years, as I said, 307 games and a fantastic winning percentage of 56%. So just a few thoughts on Damien Hardwick. Um, being a 29 year old guy, I'm old enough to remember what Richmond was like before Hardwick took over as coach. And a lot of Richmond fans will understand what I'm saying about that because there was a time where Richmond was just about the most hopeless club in the league. When I started watching football, there was Carlton who was you know, genuinely the worst team in the comp. And, and with Richmond, it was rare that they were the worst team in the comp, but it felt like there was no hope there. You had Matthew Richardson, an absolute star, uh, playing in that side and then a whole hope of just what appeared to be medium talented guys and the the point that I'm illustrating now is just unbelievable to consider how bad Richmond were pre-Hardwick to where they are now, an absolute powerhouse of the AFL. I distinctly remember season 2010 because it was the only time the Eagles have won, won a wooden spoon and I was very, very invested in the rebuild. Richmond going into the, that 2020 season, um, you know, but prior to Gold Coast existing, there was talk of them not winning a game. And that was just kind of media uh, doing its thing and talking about clickbaity kind of stuff even back then. But there was genuinely talk that Richmond wouldn't win a game that year. The first, you know, nine or so games of that season, you know, Richmond had put up a few valiant efforts as uh, as the favorite for the wooden spoon. And then in round 10, they took on West Coast at the MCG. And I genuinely thought we were going to win this game. And what happens? Richmond win that game by 50 points. Jack Rewalt kicks 10. And for me, that's kind of in my head. That was kind of the turning point for Richmond, as far as I'm concerned, into them becoming what they would become, you know, by 2020. From memory, I think they made finals in 13, 14, and 15 in all three years. Again, I'm completely going off memory here. I haven't done any research, but I think in all three years, they got eliminated from finals. 2016, uh, they had a terrible year. I think they finished in the bottom four that season or got close to. And there was genuine talk of Hardwick getting sacked. And uh, instead of sacking him, you know, they, they showed the faith. And, you know, what we all know what happened in 2017. Richmond became the best team in the AFL, winning that grand final in heroic fashion. They finished third that year, I think. But dominance of that team, particularly in that grand final against Adelaide, there was something special there. And as you know, they arguably be the best home and away team in 2018, falling short, but going on to win in 19 and 23 premierships in four years. It's just remarkable the turnaround that Richmond had under Damien Hardwick and, of course, Brendan Gale as well. Damien Hardwick, uh, to my mind, will go down as one of the absolute best coaches I've ever seen in terms of taking a club from where it was to becoming an absolute powerhouse of the competition. And not only that, not only winning premierships, but having a serious brand and identity. And the way they played on field was a little bit revolutionary as well with their chaos, territory battle with it, the smalls to work. I often thought a hallmark of that team was, yes, Richmond had some top end talent, you know, back in the day it was like Dusty Martin, Cotchen, uh, Alex Rance, Jack Rewalt, but I also thought there was just a lot of players that swept into that system and became absolute guns. And you got the sense that they wouldn't really be quite anywhere near the same player they would be had they gone to a different club. So the Richmond brand, the Richmond style, playing to your strengths. They were a fascinating case study in the AFL. And of course, you know, arguably their best premiership was in 2020 in the COVID affected year, um, you know, where, you know, every team had disadvantages, but certainly the Victorian sides who had to relocate for the entire year. If you've seen the Make Your Mark documentary, you realize that it was particularly tough, especially for some of these older, you know, demographic clubs who all had families. Richmond's resilience that year, alongside, you know, Geelong and the other Victorian clubs to put their heads down and ultimately win a premiership, 
it's just unbelievable. So I'm heaping praise on um, you know Hardwick and Richmond here, and, and that's this is the time to do it because uh, one of the best coaches we've seen in the modern era is stepping down. Who knows for how long he might come back, but you know, understandably, he's been the senior coach of a powerhouse team for 13 years. It would be a taxing job. We see that the careers of coaches don't really last as long as they used to, or at least, you know, I'm thinking back to, you know, Kevin Sheedy, who's an extreme example, but 13 years as a senior coach, um, it's, it's fairly rare. It would have been a taxing role, extremely stressful. As I said, the pandemic happened in that time. Um, you know, I think he had some personal issues happening, you know, in his own life around that time as well. But even through this period where Richmond's list has completely transitioned, they've got a very, very different best 22. You've still got Dusty and Rewalt in there, but they're in the twilight of their careers. When, when Richmond's playing well, you still see that brand, that tenacity that uh, we've become accustomed to expect from Richmond. So I guess, you know, at this point in time, I'm sure Richmond fans, um, I don't know what the general consensus was on Hardwick because, you know, the most recent years, you know, Richmond have been up and down, but I'd imagine it's a little bit of an emotional time. And I certainly felt that way when John Worsfold stepped down, even though the results were terrible that year, there was still a sense of uh, nostalgia and, and gratitude, I guess, for a premiership coach stepping down and uh, moving on to a new chapter. So there's some uncertainty. I'd imagine that feeling is even more amplified considering what Richmond were and what Hardwick allowed them to become. So I'm thinking of you Richmond fans. Um, obviously a natural inclination is to think, gee, what are the chances we, we lose that Richmond identity that we currently have and we return to something closer to what we used to be. And I think with Richmond, the way they're resourced to the culture that they've built over the last 13 years, I feel very confident that they are gonna stay a strong club. Now I've made videos about, you know, what, what the next few years might look for Richmond in terms of an awkward point in their list. It is an awkward time to leave Richmond right now. Are they in a premiership window? Are they rebuilding? They're kind of neither here nor there right now, but you do get the sense that with the, the size of the club it is at the moment and the, the residual culture there, I think Richmond will be just fine. It'll be intriguing to see who takes over as senior coach. I haven't even thought that far ahead, but at the moment, it's an emotional time for Richmond fans and um, congratulations to Hardwick on a unbelievable coaching career. Anyway, guys, just thought I'd do a little bit of a snapshot on uh, what my thoughts on Damien Hardwick stepping down. I have a feeling that this guy will coach again. I'm not sure when, but you know, it's been 13 years. He might need a good few years out of the game. Richmond fans, if you're out there, uh, let me know in the comments what you feel about all this and um, yeah, maybe throw in some suggestions as who, to, who might be the new coach of Richmond. By the time this video comes out, we'll probably have some more information. Um, but for now, interesting times. But thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.